Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio up here at TIFF, Hunter, Sarah, Sir Jack. I've got to repeat that because <laughs> I felt like gold coming out. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I mean, you know, you know how, how I feel about this. It's c congratulations, guys, on having this here. Um, Sarah, brilliant work in terms of, like, getting this all the way from a screenplay that had a bit of buzz about it. Um, but, you know, cinema has kind of gone into these stories about teachers and students, whether it's Dangerous Liaisons or Stand and Deliver. Uh, they've kind of really captured the audience's imagination a few times. Um, how is it different for you? How personal did you delve into How personally did you delve into this story? Um, the story is very personal for me. It's, um, you know, reflective of my experiences as a teacher in Redfern. <coughs> um, I was teaching at an Aboriginal Arts College in Redfern and you know, I had this fascination with this concept of existentialism, which I'd been reading a bit about this, you know, idea or question, I guess, are we truly free as individuals? And when I was teaching at this college, um, my students and, and friends were seemed to be about as far away from this, this concept of personal freedom as I could imagine. So, um, yeah, the story really came about through wanting to truthfully tell a tale that, that, that asks that question, that poses that question, and through the character of, of Liam, um, you know, see exactly what happens when we place a character in front of these obstacles. Um, and how early on did you know that, that Hunter was your Liam? Um, had seen, what I you? had seen Hunter's work previously. Um, he did a, a short film, I think is the first thing I saw that, that you'd done, which is the Jean Jeans. And, um, I was doing quite a bit of work for NITV at the time as well and um, you know managed to orchestrate some situations that, that Hunter and I would work together and um, yeah it was really through that when it came to actually casting the film um, Hunter was at the top of our list in terms of some young Indigenous kids that I wanted to see for that role and you know having lived in the Redfern community there were quite a few kids that I'd been doing workshops with you know, in the years leading up to, but um, when Hunter came in the room, he just became Liam, and it was a no-brainer. It was, you know, it was, it was no one else really to to consider after he'd come into the room. Were you surprised by the reception the screenplay received? Because there was quite a bit of buzz around the film before a frame had even been shot, which is a rare and beautiful thing, I guess. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I think it's um. You know, I guess having an international actress like Christina Ricci um, coming to Australia to tell, you know, a, a fairly gritty story about a, a relatively small community um, created a little bit of interest, I guess. Um, Is that who you would have picked to play yourself in an ideal world? <laughs> well, I'm pretty lucky, aren't I? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, she, I, I just really admire Christina as an actress, so... Um, you know, you talk about a lot of different actresses when you go through that casting process and, you know, what was more important than anything is that we as the audience believe that she belongs in Redfern or that she would, you know, be in that situation teaching at a, at a um, you know, very multicultural school in a tough neighbourhood. And Hunter, for you, like coming on board this project and having to kind of make these transitions and these connections between, you know, hip hop and Shakespeare yeah. and... Um, the toughness of your family and then your own personal journey through that um, must have been also like an exciting project to get your teeth into because it's got so oh, many yeah. elements to it. Oh, completely. It was um, it was one of those projects where you, you kind of read the script and you're just like, oh, finally, something fun. Oh, I don't have to kill myself at the end of this one. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> um, so, and the funny thing about the subtext uh, is uh, with the Shakespeare, I always respected and, know, and knew Shakespeare, but with this piece, um, I actually, because of Liam, I had to delve into the subtext and actually kind of write, and she told me to write what you think those lines say, and that kind of was a huge learning curve, and I really was grateful for that, and that's what I kind of drew out of that script, and yeah, it was... Did you know much about Redfern before? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, um, Redfern's quite a, uh, it's been in my... Uh, my past, uh, not so much personally to myself, but uh, a lot of friends and cousins, yeah. Because transitioned a lot too over the last few years. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, they're all kicked out. <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, it's changed quite a lot, and for for good as well. Yeah. And you'd probably seen Jack's work in Short Circuit or something. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, good old kidding. Jack. <laughs> but, um, good old Jack, Jack. What about you? Well, in, in terms of choosing, like, I, I, you know, what projects to get involved in yeah. in, in Australia, especially these days. Um, 
you know, I mean, to me, obviously, an icon, um, Brad Morant, personal favorite there. Yeah. Um, you know, Chan of G- Jimmy Blacksmith, and yeah. um, these are not, and you, you worked as a Goodwill ambassador for a while, the UNHCR. Yeah. Um, so for you, do, is that what you look for these days? You look for something you connect to personally and, and you uh, want to tell these uh, things? I've, I've always uh, looked for something that I can connect to personally. <coughs> it doesn't mean that it has to reflect an experience in my own life, but there, there is a, a humanity there available to me in the role. But what I connected to was the humanity in this entire script. When Sarah first showed me this script, and it's about four years ago, um, I, uh, I said, we have, to, uh, we have to make this. I worked in a couple of uh, short films with Sarah. Uh, but this, this script from the word go, and it's, it's a lot of things in it. It, it transcends it being a piece out of the ghetto or a piece uh, about indigenous Australia. It's a piece about humanity. Uh, I mean, it, uh, Shakespeare used an ancient tale to tell his tale. And this is, uh, uh, I mean, Hamlet's not about Denmark or Elsinore. It's about the people, and this isn't about Redfern or the block so much as it is about the people as well. And the person that takes you there has always been this central character that is played by Christina. This person who comes in from the outside and takes us through this world and reveals uh, what's it? It's beautifully written. It's a, it's a piece of writing that is attractive in the first place and as you know won an award as you said simply as a, as a script before it was made. It's well worth making. I took one look at it and I said we got to make this picture and here we are. Ain't that great? <laughs> <laughs> and you get to make it in us. Yeah. yeah. So, so is that for you, is that important these days too, the location of where a film is being shot? Do you have favourites? Not really. I, not really. I think it can be made in a room anywhere in the world. If what's there is worth saying and you're in the company of good filmmakers, let's go do it. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it, and there's like poet, like I mean, I know, like, you know, obviously you've got some famous recordings of poems mm. all the time and involvement with Man from Snowy River and, yep. um, and having all these elements, even hip hop and stuff like that, you know, it's just another form of poetry. It's fabulous. It is another form of poetry. And, and the, the to be or not to be speech is made incredibly relevant, incredibly available to a younger generation through Hunter's presentation of this character, Liam, for whom those words mean something right here and now in his life in that place in Redfern. It's relevant to the here and now, it's relevant to the young, and it's an eternal tale. The people, one of the scenes that is my favorite of mine is, is with him telling his dad in prison that he's never going to be like him. I get tears every time, I've seen it five times, I get tears. And people who know nothing about Redford, who know nothing for that matter about Shakespeare or the rest of the story and where it's set, at that moment they will have tears in their eyes because it's a moment between a child and a parent that is relevant throughout the world. Mm -hmm. It's a heartbreaker. It's beautiful. And at the end of this tale, there is a redemption of the young couple kissing. They finally get that together. I couldn't wait. You know, it's like all of this stuff talking to each other. Come on. It's fantastic. Um, talk about like coming full circle or that sort of resolution for you, Sarah, in order, like world premiering at TIFF in Toronto, this story that, you know, started as a seed back in Oz. Um, what's that like for you just on a personal level inside? Personally, it is, it's been such an emotional journey for me because, you know, writing this script many years ago, you live with these characters inside of your head for so long. And so, you know, during different stages of production, you sort of, you start putting faces to the characters during casting and they become people and then the story. And to me, I guess, premiering at Toronto has been, it's almost like the icing on the cake. You know, it's the last stage where you can actually, you know, share that experience with an audience. And I sat in with the audience last Mm -hmm. night and to hear people sniffling around me at, at certain moments and then laughing in certain moments. It was just, you know, a huge relief that, that this story, you know, has resonated. 
Well, congratulations on it. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us up Thank here. It's a pleasure much. having you in. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Good on you.